for the biggest personalities on the biggest stories every day, Monday through Friday, right here on FS1. Well, the other huge move in New York last night was Le'Veon Bell was going to the Jets. The three-time Pro Bowler agreed to a four-year deal for just over $52 million with $35 million guaranteed. Bell sat out all of last season, and he will actually make less per year than he was slated to make under the franchise tag with Pittsburgh. Jay Glazer is still with us. Jay, what do you make of this contract? Um, I think that it showed that Le'Veon, in my opinion, made the wrong move last year. Hmm. You know, we always said this is going to be 14 plus that he can never make up, depending on what the next contract is. He really needed to make up all that lost money in this, and he didn't. In fact, he had averaged it out to a little you know, less than 14 a year. So okay. that's that's a significant chunk of change that you can never ever make back in a position that has the the, the shortest shelf life in the NFL. Mm. So it sounded like in the end that the Jets were bidding against themselves because yeah. it sounded like everybody oh. had dropped out. Is that pretty Skip, much? Skip, it was so heard? bad yesterday with there were a lot of favors going on yesterday amongst others in the media of huh. just trying to help out Levy and really? Bell's guy. And yeah, there was the Jets and you know, because there's a lot of things that go on here. One, you know, teams always look at it skill versus circus. Right? Skill, yeah. no question. But he brought a big circus too. If he had just played last year. You're just going by the skill. There would have been a lot of bidders, I think. Mm -hmm. But a lot of teams said, you know, we just don't want to deal with the circus. They also heard how much money he's going to want. All the different things were being put out there. It's, it's, it's incredible how many teams will hear something, even from social media, and they'll buy it. And they'll yeah. go, oh, I hear he wants this. Yeah, we're, gonna, we're not going to do it. I hear he wants quarterback money. We're going to bail out. They don't even bother calling the agent. Mm. So, you know, in, in the end there, yeah, I think Le'Veon, um, you know, he overplayed – his hand, hmm. and that's, look, I know we can say, well, he got to take a year off. You're missing out on 15 million yeah. bucks. Yeah. And also, being away from the guys, it's not what you want. The locker room, when you retire from the NFL, it's the locker room. So, dude, that's what you miss the most. Mm -hmm. And he missed a year of that. Hmm. And Pittsburgh's locker room pretty much quit on him, it sounded like, right? They no, well, it was the other way, because they thought he was coming in. They truly yeah. thought he was coming that. in. And, you know, they were given every indication. When it didn't happen... They looked at it like, hey, you're telling, like, uh -huh. you could tell us, be straight with us, yeah. but don't play us I as see. well. Yeah. And I think that's where they got a little, you know, got a little hurt with that. So what will he mean to the Jets at this stage of his career? Uh, it'll be interesting with him and Adam Gase, but, mm -hmm. you know, Adam Gase d does have a re very good offensive mind, but Adam Gase is, like, setting his ways, and that's really yeah. what happened hmm. with Miami. It was almost like to the owner, like, hey, this is what I do. Just leave me alone. Let me coach the team, and you go on the team. And it's not kind of really how Mr. Ross is down there. Um, but I think Adam Gase, with his the way he runs an offense, he's going to find an awful lot of ways to use Le'Veon Bell. Le'Veon Bell is a different type of player. Mm. He's not just a running back. He does. He's a hybrid. He does all these different mm. things. He's a matchup nightmare for mm -hmm. safeties, for wide receivers, for cornerbacks. Mm -hmm. Using them the right way, he absolutely is worth the money. Mm. Do you expect Tom Brady to show any decline at age 42 next year? I haven't seen it yet. I haven't either. Right? I haven't seen it. We haven't it. seen it. You know, but the thing that Tom does that's different than everybody else yeah. is Tom figures ways to outwork the world as he gets older. What can I do? The great ones do that. You know, how can I? A, a lot of guys come out of college and they're like, hey, I'm, what I did in college, like what got me to succeed there, I'll just use that in the NFL. Yes. That's not the case. You got to work yourself. You got an extra 20 hours a day mm -hmm. to work on your craft. Huh. Tom does, mm. and that's why in every way possible, and that's why he's able to continue to mm. you know, really beat back father time. That's mm. why guys like him or Drew Brees or the Andrew Whitworths of the world, their work ethic is just different. Mm. So I can't let you go without asking about my Dallas Cowboys <laughs> yep. because been they've waiting. been all too quiet once again through another offseason. Right. Obviously, they're waiting to pay a whole bunch of star talent that's on the offensive right there, side, yeah. and they've paid a whole bunch of offensive line talent. Do you expect them to do anything else free agent-wise, wise, any acquisitions? As I was told yesterday, wait for all the craziness to end. Yeah. And it's not just them. Okay. There are teams with a lot of cap room who texted exactly that. We're going to wait for this foolishness to end. Really? Okay. Yes, wait for it to end, and then you'll get some good deals. Mm. I will say this. One thing the Dallas Cowboys, they don't get enough credit because they're such a circus in what they do there. But them as the GM... They have drafted incredibly well over the last couple of years by putting in 
the right kind of guys, those offensive linemen, mm -hmm. you know, by putting in the defensive back there, they're, mm. they're real, by bringing in a Leighton Van Der Esch and yeah, yeah. not pulling the plug on, you know, in the past, they couldn't resist temptation. Mm -hmm. Last couple of years, they have, and they've built a really solid nucleus over mm -hmm. there. I think they'll miss Cole Beasley at least a little bit. He's a little guy, but they're going to miss him a little but they bit. Could, they, could, they could replace him with a similar type player in the They're going to have to draft well. Mm -hmm. They're going to have to bring in those other weapons. Now they got a guy like Amari Cooper in there um, who it's you know, we're down at the Pro Bowl and they're talking like, hey, we just got to, we've got to teach him an awful lot of things. I think Amari's just like, like we talk, he's like, I'm good. I can eat whatever I want. I can do whatever I want. And a lot of guys like Dak and those guys down there, they don't. Those guys work. Mm -hmm. Dak works. Obviously, Jason Witten works. And I think. Amari Cooper is just going to get better and better being around those guys. Really? Yeah. Okay. Well, that's I feel better. Something to hold on to. Right? Okay, it's been a they got a good. Days no, no, no. Guys. Just wait. They'll add in. They don't need an awful lot. Look okay. what they just did. Right. They don't need an awful lot. You feel well, okay? Uh, not really. But all. <laughs> Either way, I tried it's for you, man. Nothing. I tried for you. Jay, always yeah. good to have you. Thank You're you busy guy, guy. Thank making you. time for undisputed. Next up, should the Warriors be scared of?